Young archaeologists are investigating an old shipwreck in Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin. Students from East Carolina University are conducting an archaeological survey on a shipwreck that may prove to be the first self-unloading schooner barge in the world. Self-unloaders saved time and money by eliminating manual labor. Caitlin Zand is an ECU student and one of many who are surveying the wreck. The team's work was supported by Wisconsin Sea Grant. Um, well, currently, this, currently right now I am working on a scale drawing of the ship Adriatic, which lies up in Sturgeon Bay, Wisconsin. Um, we had a three week long field school up there with uh, about 17 students from East Carolina University. And uh, we worked on drawing the ship underwater and then we brought that up and created a uh, scale drawing of it on graph paper. Zant will then nominate the wreck to the National Register of Historic Places. It may surprise some people that Wisconsin has more than 52 vessels listed on the National Register. That's more than any other state. We went in believing this to be Adriatic, and it is a, um, a schooner barge that was built in 1889 by uh, James Davidson out of West Bay City, Michigan. But the thing about Adriatic is that it was then converted in um, 1914 to a self-unloading barge, and so it had a lot of other implements added to it then to help with the stone trade. So what's unique about it is that it um, was kind of a, a new um, take on these um, self-unloading ships from a few years prior and so this kind of helped propel the ship into a modern age and then also the later self-unloading vessels that you now see on the Great Lakes were kind of designed after this ship. The Adriatic was able to compete with the larger more modern steel ships through its conversion into a self-unloading schooner barge. However, rapidly changing technology soon outdated the Adriatic's self-unloading system. The ship was dismantled and abandoned at the Lethem D. Smith Shipbuilding Company dock in the late 1920s. In the summer of 1930, the Adriatic sank next to the dock. Today, the bottom of the hull remains largely intact. The ECU students worked as a team to document this historically important vessel. What, 15 or 16 in this case for the side? <clears throat> and the way we started was each student had a 10 by 10 foot section of the shipwreck to draw underneath the water um, on a sheet that's called mylar. And then we took that and compiled all of those together onto a, um, a scale drawing of the ship in pencil on graph paper. And so um, this is about a 10 foot long drawing because the ship itself is 202 feet long. So it was uh, quite big and quite large. Zant tackles the final chapter in mapping the Adriatic. It's a tedious process called stippling. Then we do the process of stippling, which is about a thousand tiny little dots all over the shipwreck. Using the stippling, we are able to um, kind of show what parts of the ship are farther away from the bottom of the bay or closer to the bottom of the bay or that have where the sand has accumulated as opposed to where it's uncovered. And so it kind of gives a very um, detailed version of what the ship actually looks like on the floor of Sturgeon Bay. The completed map allows researchers to see at a glance the entire vessel something that not even divers can do in the murky waters of Sturgeon Bay. And their diving showed them something else. And so we found a couple of um, gears off to the side of the wreck and also some um, metal pieces that we believe to be part of the unloading system laying in the middle of the ship as well. And so that was probably um, one of the most interesting things to find on the ship and that it um, kind of helped us identify the ship um, itself and kind of see how how it relates to other Davidson vessels as well. For more information on Caitlin Zant and her experience with Wisconsin Sea Grant, visit the For Students section of seagrant.wisc.edu. The field school was funded by Wisconsin Sea Grant and facilitated by the Wisconsin Historical Society.